I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. We reverence God today, but truly, He's a mighty God. We thank God today for Pastor Browning, Minister Cunningham, Minister Jones. We thank God for you and the other ministers that are here today. All of our officers that are here, we thank God for you as well. If perhaps we have any haters that are here, we we greet you in the name of Jesus our Christ. I discovered that everybody that smiles in your face don't necessarily mean you're any good. I discovered that there are times when the people of God need to be totally transparent about where they really are as it relates to being friends with others because one of the worst things you can have is somebody to act like they like you and they hate your guts down on the inside it is it is it is a great pleasure today that we come to you and have the opportunity to share with you again uh, in these services long day on yesterday early rising this morning. I want to do what I'm told and I'll get out of the way. I was going to play a song for you, but i play something a little late on. i play a little later. i play a little later. Something like that. Amen. Amen. We will get 1 Corinthians, if you will, in chapter 1. Verses 10, concluding with verse 14. I will be reading today from the neat New King James Version at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's 1 Corinthians, Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. At chapter 1, if you please. Beginning at verse 13, concluding with verse 14. Is that all right? How many of you love your neighbor today? Hold in 1 Corinthians, if you will, in chapter 1. It begins there. Verse 10 and says, Now I plead with you. Your Bible may read differently. Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all seek the same thing. And that there be no fighting, of, excuse me, I said, of divisions among you. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Excuse me, I'm sorry. but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been said around Dayton. It's in your Bible if you had not torn it out. It's in your Bible. It's been said around Dayton by some folks in the Mount Eden community that there are some contentions among you. Now I say that 
And each of you says, I am a Paul. Reverend Cunningham baptized me. I don't have to follow none of the rest of them folk. I mean, you know. I was one of the other preacher's products. Somebody else says that I'm of Apollos, uh, or I'm of Cephas, or I'm of Christ. Then look at what he asks. He says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Listen to what Paul said. I thank God that I didn't baptize now one of y'all rascals. You see it. Don't you see it? It's in there. 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 Verse 14, he says, saving, saving Crispus and Gaius, baptized also uh, the household of Stephanus or Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize anybody else. I want to talk to you today about simply get it together. As a matter of fact, if you don't mind, look at the neighbor and tell him it's a neighbor. Come on, y'all not saying nothing. Tell him it's a neighbor. Get it together. There is a direct need for Paul's letter. I want to thank God for my wife as well. Thank God for her being so sweet and looking so good. Amen. There's a direct need for Paul's letter because his re reason for writing was twofold. Uh, he provides, first of all, uh, uh, he makes an effort to combat the problems of the church uh, at Corinth, and secondly, if you will, he provides answers to the questions that have been asked of the church. I'll have to tell you that there were uh, some contentions, there was some confusion uh, there at the church of Corinth, and, and because of that, Paul, being an apostle of the Lord, it was his job to make for certain that they were properly fed as to the specifics of what was to happen in the church and talk about their future and their future success. Are you with me? He, he, he answers their questions concerning the operation of the church. It, it, it almost causes, if you will, a conflict in reading because it seems that Paul entertained second-hand talk. It, it seems that way because it says that he heard about what was going on from the household of Chloe. Are you with me? Uh, it seems that Paul was listening to the streets because uh, that there's a very little info for provided uh, for Chloe, but I do believe that Paul uh, prudently approaches the situation uh, because it wasn't just coming from Chloe's house. Are you with me here? Uh, it wasn't just coming from one place, but everybody around town recognized how powerful uh, Mount Enon, I mean, uh, uh, Corinth was. And they said that, that this is a powerful uh, church, uh, uh, but, but at some point or another, he says, I know uh, that the fights and uh, the brawls and the arguments that are going on, uh, they're causing their power to weaken. Causing their strength to be distorted. Causing their power to be dissolved. Are y'all in here with me? He eventually says that I believe what they said because of the way the church was experiencing toiling times with trouble. Are y'all in here with me? Paul offers a hand in clearing up some matters that needed to be addressed in this particular text. It was obvious they were having trouble with their communication. Come on. Trouble with their camaraderie. Y'all talk. Trouble with their cohesiveness. That's leading them to conclusion problems. Look around you right now. There are a lot of people who have problems with their communication. Don't want to talk like adults. Don't want to carry on as if we are all mature individuals. We have a problem with camaraderie when you have people who shake your hand turning their heads as if they know who you are. Y'all ought to help me preach this. As if they know who you are based off what somebody has said to them. Don't allow the enemy to trick 
you to go to hell listening to other people about other people. Your sense of camaraderie should never be hinged upon what somebody else says about another individual. Look at the neighbor and tell us the neighbor, get to know me for yourself. Y'all ain't saying that. Tell us to get to know me for yourself. Hey, you may be sitting by somebody that thinks they know. You need to know me for yourself. Their camaraderie, their communication, if you will, their cohesiveness, they weren't sticking together. I've seen where, I've seen where there were people, if you please, uh, they, 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 they fought each other as long uh, as they didn't have a preacher. Every moment he 
he's trying to get you to do something stupid and silly to cause your environment not to be conducive for growth, stability, and solidarity. Am I right about it? Somebody among us, if you will, his, his diabolical purposes are unmasked in their very presence. The devil is, is a trip. Can I get a witness here? I know there are those of you who classify folk in the church, if you will, uh, they, they, are, they are conservatives, intellectuals, come on, talk to me, and liberals. But I found out that there are only three types of people in the Bible. They were either Jew, Gentile, or the church of the living God. And I've come to a, a greater uh, conclusion, there are only two types of folk that we see right now. Either you're right, or you're wrong. Either you're for him or against him. Can I get a witness here? I found three types of people in the Bible. Again, they were Jew, Gentile, or the Ecclesia. We try to put people in categories, but the Jews are the chosen nation for divine purposes. The Gentiles are the rest of mankind apart from the Jews. And the Ecclesia happens to be the body by which all those who have accepted Jesus Christ are now considered family. Are you with me here? So Paul, Paul, led by God, gives the Corinthian church a call to reevaluate themselves. Because he said that there's a need for instruction. He gives an interrogative and imperatives all at the same time. His real question is, is that if you want success, you need to see some things that have happened before we got to this point. Am I right about it? He says, he says, watch this. He says, if you want an epiphany, if you want to reach the zenith of your personal lives, your social lives, and your ecclesial lives, he says, you got to get it together. Tell the neighbor, say, neighbor, we got to get it together. Not only that, look at it. He says, look at it. When Michelle, Azariah, and Hananiah got in trouble, you do remember that? You know them as Shadrach. Come on, Meshach and Abednego. You remember when they got in trouble, let me tell you what happened. They got themselves together. But at the end of the story, God showed up and showed out in a fiery furnace. Can I get a witness here? You, you remember, if you will, when Paul and Silas got in trouble and they were thrown down into a Philippi jail. Paul says, since, your, since my name begins with P, he says, I'm going to pray. He says, since your name begins with an S, he said, I want you to sing. Are you with me here? So when they sang and prayed, uh, when they got in trouble, they made an effort to get together, and the Lord showed up at midnight. Is there anybody here that's ever been in midnight, uh, and some trouble has uh, rose up in your life, uh, and you just needed somebody just to grab hands with, uh, somebody that would be on the same accord with you, and call on the Lord? It's when you've been in trouble, you got to get together with somebody who knows the power of prayer. When Peter preached out on the day of Pentecost, the script says they were all in one place. He says they were all together. And God showed up. Are you with me here? And showed out. If you need an epiphany, Malina, if you need God for God to show up and show out for you, if you need money to change, if you need your heart fixed, if you need your mind regulated, all you need to do is get it together. And one thing you realize is that God is able. Can I get a witness here? Paul tells us earlier that Jesus is our summoner. He's our sanctification. He's our summoner, if you will. He says that he's our source. He's our subject. It almost seems like Paul, in this particular text, rather as a spiritual gavel, it seems that Paul puts his finger to his mouth. It seems that Paul is making a very strong effort to call some order to a very disorderly group, if you will. In street colloquialism, Paul says, hold up. Paul said, pump your brakes. Paul says, look here. Paul says, uh, uh, check yourself before you. Come on, wreck yourself. Listen, he states, if you will, the subject matter. He First of all, he says, watch this. Paul says in this particular text, he says, everybody here, in order that we can get to a place of success, he says, everybody here, number one, has to speak the same thing. Are y'all in here with me? He says, you have to, come on, speak the same thing. Paul has 
has to make it plain. Watch this. He has to make plain his request when he says uh, at the part A, because watch this, uh, to speak the same thing does not mean uh, from an ecclesial standpoint. Are you with me here? Because that particular declares, it says that we conform to the same uh, system of worship. Are you with me here? In essence, we, we wear the same robe. We come to the same car rehearsal. We come to the same Sunday school. Uh, but then there are still people who have on the same robe, y'all, excuse me a minute, uh, but can't stand each other in the choir.
They see you two years old and they say, that's her age, that's the one, that's the one. They don't want to come to worship with people who are phony. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Don't you look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. 
You know it's work. Because I got news for you. There are those of you who have to put up with one another. Come on, talk to me here. And you already know that we have to make agreements between the two of us. You take out the trash, and I'm going to wash these dishes. You change the baby this time. See, some of us as men, we try to put the job all on the woman. Come back. Ah, Y'all said amen a while ago. Come back. Come back. We have to learn how to help to carry the load. Can I get a witness here? He says, he says, he says, watch this. He says, he says, one, there, there, there is one body and one spirit. He says, just as you were called in the hope of your calling, he says, there's only one Lord. One faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all in you all. It's a very simple application, if you will. If we're going to do it, let's do it together. Can I get a witness here? Romans 15 and 6 goes on and says that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me here? He says again in Romans 6 and 5, boy, if we have, uh, if we've been united together in the likeness of, of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Tell the neighbors and neighbor, we may be going through right now. Come on, I need you to help me preach this. Deputize yourself as an extension of this message and tell somebody, neighbor, we may be going through right now. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. So we may be going through right now. Hey, listen, uh, David even picked up and declared uh, that we've been made at some point uh, endure for a night, but tell them joy has got to come. Uh, I know your money's been funny, your change has been strange, your credit won't get it, but listen, joy has got to come. Uh, I know you've been lied on, talked about like a joke, dog, dog, uh, and they said you'd never be anything, but I got news for you. Joy has got to, is there anybody up in here, up in here that can declare to the enemy that, listen, joy has got to come, uh, regardless of what the devil tries to do to me, regardless of any sickness that he tries to bring about. If I lose my job, I still got my joy. If I lose friends, I still got my praise. Come on, if you will, just holler in this place and declare, joy has got to come. Is there anybody here that needs a blessing right now? If you really need a blessing right now, you ought to tell the devil and let him realize and recognize that I am what God says I am. I'm blessed because God says I'm blessed. Hey, listen, self, self said, huh? I got a blessing on the way. Is there anybody here that says, regardless of what the devil is doing, I'm going to come out on the good side? Tell somebody, I'm coming out of here. Tell them, I'm coming out of here. Tell them, say, neighbor, you better be careful. I'm telling you, I'm liable to run up out of this pew. Because I got a blessing on the way. Is there anybody here that says, I got a blessing on the way? The greater reason this church has had a problem because of their selfishness and their sin. And I want to give you a word, uh, a Greek word here, schismata. All right. yeah. The Greek word schismata is a word that determines and talks about the differences of opinion. Everybody in here will have differences of opinion. We have to learn how to respect each other's differences. Now just because you're saved, Deacon Bible Jones, uh, and got the Holy Ghost, what am I going to fly? Look, ain't got to look back now. I'm going to run and see what he ain't going to be. All that kind of stuff. You can't come to my house and move my furniture. Yeah. I can't come to your place either. <laughs> Are y'all listening to what I'm talking about? We are all individuals. Had we the same mind, all of us would have had on great. But because of the schismata, everybody has a difference of opinion. Can I get a witness here? But in speaking the same thing, we have to be aware that there is one thing that we ought to say alike. Jesus is Lord. Not only is he Lord, but he shows up in my walk. He shows up in my talk. Are you ready to hear? He shows up when I greet people. Y'all ain't got to help me. He shows up when I shake hands with folk. I know don't like me. Are y'all with me in here? Sometimes y'all just go to some of them folk. You know they don't like you. Just shake the hand, rub all on them, and get all close as you can to them, and worry the devil out of them. There are some folk you have to love the hell out of them. You have to 
to love the devil out of some people. Greeted by, greeted by somebody this morning. I started, I started going, just grab that lady. I don't know where she is now. You have to love the devil out of some folk. Because we need to speak the same thing. Again, the schismata declares that we'll all have differences of opinion, but the thing that we need to declare together, again, is Jesus is love. First of all, he says, number one, speak the same thing. But then secondly, let me help you. I'm going to get out of your way. He says, stop fighting. Yeah. Look, point number two, write it down, write it down, write it down. He says, stop fighting. That there be no divisions among you. Everywhere I went, I went to school. And when they holler out, you know, there are some crazy folk that gather to it, you know. But we got the Mardi Gras no deal. And buddy, let me tell you something. There were times that there were people out there that didn't come to do what we did. We came to enjoy the Mardi Gras. But then there was some, uh, uh, Miss Marvel Golden, who came out there, and guess what they did? They started shooting. <laughs> pow, pow, pow. Now listen, let me tell you this. Nobody I knew that had good sense ran toward the sound of the bullet. <laughs> See, one thing we don't really realize is that when there is a, a sound of confusion in our church, ain't nobody about to run toward the sound of a bullet. No, 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 no. Now they ain't coming where there's a whole bunch of fighting. At some point, we need to come to an agreement and say, regardless of what happens, we need to trust God. Regardless, sometimes you have to trust God in your personal life. But then you have to learn how to do so as a corporate body. Listen, you can't trust God and don't everybody come to prayer meeting. Why y'all got quiet that time? There are those, if you will, there are those uh, who don't necessarily like the way. Let me tell you what we have at meetings at my church. We do not have this so business type meeting. We have praise and worship before the meeting. We pull the Bible out in the meeting. Because there ought not to be anything conducted other than the word of God. I'm coming in God's house. Oh, y'all don't like this. I know, I know you don't like this. Yeah. You got to have the word of God. That's what keeps us from fighting. What did the word say? After praise and worship, I have some, if you will. One time, I cried so bad. An older lady, she got up in the meeting. My wife was there. That lady went up one side of me, came down the other. Yes, she did. Let me tell you. And she said, she said, so and so, this and so, this and that and the other. And when she said that, and she got, only thing I could do, because I wasn't going to disrespect this lady, Miss Gray, uh -huh. only thing I could do was cry because uh, out of the 80 some years she lived. Uh -huh. Don't look like she ever picked up her Bible uh -huh. and come to any conclusion uh, to declare that she was really saved like she said she was. Uh -huh. One thing about it, y'all don't like this preaching, do you? Let me help you. One thing you have to realize uh, is that if we are the body of Christ, we have to know how to conduct ourselves in every environment. In other words, after that meeting, after that meeting, I said, no, we ain't gonna have it up in here. I'm gonna pray and watch this. If it get too hot, I'm gonna close it down. There are people who come for the sake of serving up wrath. They come to stir up hell in your church. And you got to know them when you see them. And when you got people that pray, they can discern. Oh, yeah, she got something up her sleeve. She got something up. She got something up. He said, stop fighting. What were they fighting about? They were fighting about, well, who, who posed the, uh, who posed cooked the macaroni? <laughs> it's in the text, it's in the text. Who that, who that supposed to bring them peas? What's called them bring them peas? They were fighting about silly stuff. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, it's in your Bible if you hadn't torn it out of there. 
They were arguing and fighting about stuff that didn't make any sense. Can I tell you this? Then there were those, if you please, they've been fighting and mad at each other. Sister Joan took uh, Sister Smith's husband 20 years ago. <laughs> Y'all only help me preach this. And Sister, what's called one of them should have been glad to get rid of that rascal. You ought to have been glad to let it go of and let Sister Smith have that problem. He said, stop fighting in the house of the Lord. He said, stop fighting. He said, first of all, speak the same thing. Even in the midst of the schismata, we may not always agree. But then he goes on and says, don't fight because we don't agree. He says, let us agree. Come on. Agreeably disagree. And put something together as a plan. And let's work it. Can I get a witness? He says, don't allow there to be divisions among you because there are some innocent souls. There are some innocent souls. There are some innocent souls. Oh, you look around. There are some innocent souls who are trying to find a connection with the Lord. There are some of these babies trying to find their way to God and they can't get there because you got a bunch of grown people. Fighting and arguing about their own agenda. Are y'all gonna talk with me? I'm about to leave you in a minute. I'm gonna leave you. I'm going home. I'm going back. Going back. All right. Alabama. I'm on the way. I, 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 I'm going. I'm going. But but here's what needs to happen before I leave. We need to stop fighting. Innocent souls that are trying to connect with the church. And the real fight is because of the politics in the church. There is a great disturbance. They're fighting because of disputations, uh, vivacity, if you will, and intellectual uh, deceits. They're failing to see that there are no big dogs in the church. Or they're failing to see that there are no big dogs and little dogs in Mount Eden. They're failing to see that big dogs and little dogs don't exist. They're failing to see that uh, there are no Democrats and Republicans. Can I get a witness here? He goes on and talks about God in God's church. There are no political prejudices. He says we need to rid ourselves of all of those no down things. And I'll further tell you. To so stop fighting because you don't have to fight. All right. As a matter of fact, you don't mind. I know you've been bothering that neighbor. But tell him again, say, neighbor, you don't have to fight. Y'all right. still quiet. Tell him, you don't have to fight. Right. There was a lady. There was a lady, if you please. This particular lady, uh, one particular day, if you will, she would go out on her regular routine and pray out under a tree. This lady went out under the tree, if you will, and she prayed to God this particular day. She said, Heavenly Father, please bless me with a little flower. She said, Heavenly Father, please bless me with a little sugar. You know, oh, Lord, bless me with a little meal. Went back in the house, if you will. Did it day after day. Some little old boys were watching this woman. Those little boys came around in the tree and they said, we're going to play a trick on this old crazy lady. Let me help you what they did. Those boys went out and bought the items that they heard the woman praying about. One of them little rascals went out and bought some sugar. The other one bought some flour. And another one bought some meal. The lady went out there under the tree you know how y'all pray. Come on, talk to me. Mother, you know what I'm talking about. She said, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. She said, you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob now. Say, Heavenly Father, if you will, please bless me with some flour, sugar, and meal. Hey, after a while, if you will, those boys say, yeah, we're going to get it this time. The next day came. They went and bought those items, but them little old raggedy boys got up in the tree. 
When they got in the tree, if you will, the woman came on her regular routine. While they were up in the tree, if you will, the woman came just like she did day after day. And the woman said, oh, Heavenly Father, please bless me with a little flower. And boom, flower fell out the tree. After a while, she kept on praying, if you will. She said, Lord, please bless me with a little meal. Bam, a meal fell out the tree. Then she said, mmm, y'all ain't said that yet. She said, mmm, bless me with a little sugar, and sugar fell out the tree. Then after a while, the little old raggedy boys fell out of the tree laughing and chuckling at the lady. And they said, listen, I know they were laughing at the wheel. The lady looked back and she picked up her items up. And those little boys said to the woman, the woman said, Lord, I thank you for buying or sending me this flour, sugar, and meal. Then the little raggedy boys were laughing so hard. They said, lady, you so crazy. God didn't buy you that flour, sugar, and meal. She said, they said, we did. That old woman looked back with her stuff under her own. She looked at him and told him, she said, yeah, the devil may have bought it, but my God sent it. Look at her neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't have to fight your own battles. If you go ahead and talk to the Lord God and make your enemies bring you a piece of bread. Ask David about it. David said, I prepare a table before you in the presence of every hater you got to around David. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, God will. <laughs> Tell somebody to stop fighting. You don't have to fight your own battles. Be careful of your countenance and the way you approach people. Don't walk around money and with that ugly look on your face. Don't go around acting as if you know me. You don't know me. Look at the neighbor and tell me you don't know me. You don't know me because I will tell you. Uh-huh. I'll tell you some things. First thing he said, he said that we need to speak the same thing. Not only do we need to speak the same thing, but he said that we need to stop fighting. Are y'all in here with me now? And he said that, uh, not only that, uh, but he said, I want you to synchronize. He said, uh, get on uh, one accord. Look at a neighbor and tell a neighbor, if you get on uh, one accord with me, God will make a way uh, for all of us. Did you hear me? He said that we need to conduct ourselves uh, with great understanding uh, and stop all uh, of the madness. Did you hear me today? Uh, when he talks about it, uh, he says uh, that if we get on uh, one accord, God uh, will begin to answer our prayers. He said God uh, would begin to open doors uh, that have been closed uh, in our faces. You do recall the time uh, that Martin uh, Luther King uh, joined together uh, the people down south and uh, they marched uh, and when they marched, uh, they marched uh, together. Did you hear me? And they sang song uh, hand in hand uh, declaring that we shall uh, overcome. Uh, Mm-hmm. 
What's going on? 